Hello there, Pixel Pushers. It's Sadiq Hussain here from the Pixel Pushers YouTube website. And um, we're going to be looking at, as a follow on from my uh, previous video, uh, and I'll put a link to that at the end and also in the description for this video. Uh, and the previous one was about using multiple gradients on an image. Uh, but of course, you can use multiple gradients um, or even a single gradient uh, using the gradient tool on a graphic, on a logo, on a shape, and of course on text. So that's what we're going to look at today is using it on text. And, and a perfect way to demonstrate that is by using a, um, a given um, a type style or logo or um, title that you've seen in from popular culture. And we're just using it as inspiration, of course, um, just to give us an idea of what we're aiming at. Um, so, uh, a really good one to, to look at at the moment with the recent trailer and announcements of the title for the fifth, uh, and they say final Indiana Jones film, that's Indiana Jones and uh, the Dial of Destiny, um, make of it what you will of the title, we don't know what that means yet, but um, so... But we're going to be looking at the original uh, film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or as it's been retitled, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. But just to give you the type, uh, the um, the style. So let me bring in um, that image just for reference. So I'm just going to file in Affinity uh, Photo uh, Place because uh, I want to um, uh, get that particular image. And it should be in my resources. And there it is. And I'm just going to show you what we uh, uh, want to aim for. OK, so if we just zoom into that, really, this is what we're looking at, is that type style, that type of font and the styling on that particular image. Um, there's a um, uh, um, some effects which we can use in the layers palette. But it's this gradient on the main title is what we're looking at. OK, so that's what we're going to emulate. Now, I'm going to leave that opens for reference purposes and uh, and I'm going to go to uh, a new document. So we'll go to file. New. I'm just going to stick with A4, make it um, orientation as landscape. Um, don't want to transparent background and create that. OK, so first of all, let's um, uh, look at typing our um, uh, lettering so we go to the font tool and remember in the font tool you have frame text tool which is more for um, text in documents and the artistic text tool and it's the artistic text tool that we're looking at okay now i have got the appropriate font installed on my operating system which affinity photo will pick up um, but if you haven't got the appropriate font um, the the desired font or a font that's near as damn it that you're looking for uh, which is uh, which is this type of font uh, which actually is called the adventure font funnily enough um, then you need to download it first okay uh, if you are on a mac then you 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 find it from various font libraries like the font uh, is a good one and um uh, you uh, install it, open it, unzip the file and install it in the um, font book uh, that's on a Mac. On a Windows machine, then you um, uh, open the font and when you double click it, uh, file, it should give you the option to install and that, it, that, that gets installed within your operating system. And that's something to bear in mind is that whenever you're installing fonts, um, ordinarily you're not installing them in your software like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, or Affinity Publisher, or Photoshop, or any other software, you're actually installing it within your operating system of your PC or laptop. Um, and on an iPad, it's slightly different. On an iPad, you'd need to download an app called iFont from the App Store, and then follow the instructions by using that app that app actually allows you to manage and download and install third-party fonts, but only through the um, App Store. So uh, that's one way of doing it. But for the Mac, you install it in the font book, which is the central uh, um, store for all fonts. And once it's in there, then when you're in Affinity, 
Um, like I said, it's called Adventure, so I'm going to select it now. Um, file. Sorry. Go to font. Let's uh, and, and just change the um, the font here. That's the one there, Adventure, which I've only just recently installed. Click that, and then I'm going to just draw the one letter and type in R for Raiders. I'm not going to do the others within the same text layer. I'm going to create a new text layer, and I'll explain why in a moment. Okay, Raiders. Okay, so just the, the first word in this instance. Uh, and the reason is, is that so that I can move each individually because the R I want to be quite quite a bit bigger and the, the rest of the word Raiders I can then choose to position where I want to and then in relation to the rest of the the type style and you can position it there if we go back to the reference image you can see that the a right the way down reduces in size in a this certainly smaller than r and it sort of goes up in a uh, it recedes away which we're going to do in a moment as well because now that we've got roughly uh, where it is, and it's in black, uh, the default font color, but that's okay because we're going to be changing that uh, in a moment, is that what, what I want to do is to distort that font, just that, not the R, um, so we can change the perspective of it. And what we do is use the perspective tool here, the perspective mesh. And once you click on that, and you've got a little box here that tells you a couple of things, and I'm only doing it on a single plane. Uh, I want to show the grid so you can see what we're doing. And all I want to do, I want to keep this top line level as it is in the um, source, the, inspirate, the file for inspiration. And I'm just going to move that. And, you know, you decide. It's obviously very personal. You don't need to copy it exactly. So have a look. What does that look like? And then... And of course, you could distort it, you know, using um, this tool here, the mesh warp. Uh, if you wanted to warp it up, uh, we can do that as well. Well, let's just do this for now and we'll click apply. OK. Um, if I wanted to change that again and go to the mesh warp tool, that then allows me to warp that and to give it the exact sort of nature that I want to emulate the font that we're looking at. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that because that's sufficient of what I want to do. Okay. That didn't actually apply, did it? So let me just do that again. Let me just, okay, and just click apply at the top, which I forgot to do. Okay, so that's that's now embedded in there. And of course, whatever we want to apply to both of them, uh, it needs to be done um, uh, at the same time. So just let's look at the R. Let's go to the, the letter R. Uh, so that's that this one here. Okay, go to the uh, the font tool uh, let's apply a gradient on that and it's actually in the font color here in that swatch typically it's the color that we'll be looking at but if you go to the right there in that tab that's gradient so we're applying a gradient onto that font and we've done gradients before so check out those other videos if you want more in depth about how this gradient tool works but essentially we're going to be moving it from uh, going from red to I'm going to change the color say from red or an orangey color let's say down to white of course you choose whatever you want to and the, and we actually want one in the middle um, add a insert 
another point there. Um, normally you only come with two points, but we can insert, insert multiple points and change that color to yellow. So it grades from orange to yellow to white. Okay, so now that's done, we go to the, um, the gradient tool. Sorry, we go to, to that and go to gradient. We actually use the gradient tool across the image and click on that and then change that uh, I should have done that first sorry um, click on that there we go and then the bottom one remember was white down to there we will reverse that in a moment and then what we want is insert another node there and make that white, uh, sorry, yellow. Like that. And of course you can change these colors afterwards. Uh, that red is a bit too bright, so let's just change that. To whatever color you want let's just do that and you'll see this that we want to reverse so we want the red at the top and there is a way there's a longer way of doing it but if you just click on reverse there it will reverse it um, uh, from what it is originally now we can move these points so it then affects the where it the color starts from where it fades out to where the crossover point is. And again, go to your source image to have a look. So there's red at the top there and yellow down to about there. But like I said, you're not following it exactly religiously. What you're doing is using it for inspiration. So let's, let's do that, okay? Now we can't quite see the letter properly where it fades out to white. So what we'd want to do is for that layer, is apply uh, under the effects tab is an outline okay so we want to click on um, outline there and just a black outline and just if we just zoom into that you can see there it's just the thinnest of outlines and you can reduce that if you want to uh, but that's okay while we're here we want to add a drop shadow to it because the original has a drop shadow so we got out of shadow click that select that remember you have to click the box and select the, the wording uh, and then change these sliders like that and the find the bit that works for you what it looks like we want the offset to be a bit more than that and actually I want the um, the shadow to be on the uh, top left so we can just use the angle and move it round like that let's say uh, and I'm happy with that okay so let's just zoom out a little bit and if we go back to the source image now we're getting there it's got a big drop shadow there that's a much bigger than what i've done but that doesn't matter uh, and then of course we do the other so you can see there that the a is actually tucked behind that uh, r and that's easy to do because we've got it on a separate layer so if we go to that layer now this one and if we wanted to uh, move that we could position it behind it but because that layer is on top we just need to move it underneath and so now you can see that that a can be put tucked just behind the r if you wanted to do that okay so that's that's done as well um, and of course you would then emulate whatever you've done on here on that text either before you did the mesh warp or indeed afterwards um, you could apply a um, gradient over that if you wanted to okay i hope that helps do have a go just do it with one letter if you wish initially uh, remember if you haven't got the font that you need 
download it from a website like um, uh, the font most fonts a lot of fonts are free for personal use and if uh, as long as you're not using it for commercial use if you do want to use it for commercial use uh, then obviously make sure you look at the license agreements uh, and then um, act accordingly uh, but for personal use for educational purposes for demonstration purposes which of course is what this is then those uh, licenses are perfectly okay OK, so try and uh, have a go at applying a, a gradient on some text. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll be applying the same principles, but to shapes, multiple shapes. And uh, we'll, we'll follow that through because text is effectively a shape. Uh, it's just been generated by the text tool uh, rather than drawing it from um, the shape tool, which is um, uh, the, uh, the, the tool on the left hand side. And if this particular text it's on a white background and you like it and you think well actually it might look better if it was on a different background no problem we just you go to use the um, uh, the shape tool the rectangle tool change the the background put a shape on it uh, rather than it being white uh, we want it to be let's say gray center it and then and then just move that new layer to the bottom so it's behind everything and straight away me it just helps to lift the um, the character the um, the graphic much better because the background's different and of course on the background if you wanted to add a, a gradient to it then you can do that rather than it being fill being um, gray we could have a gradient on it so let's put a gradient on it and uh, we'll actually put a, a, a gradient from white to gray, uh, a linear gradient. And, uh, and all we need to do is to select the gradient tool, draw it from the center outwards. And the center markings will appear if you've got your magnetic snapping tool uh, um, icon selected at the top there so I always find that really helpful and if you haven't got it selected do that and then let's just just draw it initially that's a um, a, uh, a linear but let's 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 do it as a um, radial okay so that's effectively going from a light gray to a dark gray. But you can change that at any point just by clicking that and changing that. Maybe that's too, too light and you might want it a bit darker. Or maybe actually you want it a bit brighter and then make that one. same principle you don't want it to be solid black let's just give it a bit of a gray so it goes from uh, one shade of gray to another shade of gray okay and of course you can move this at any point to change it it's always a good idea to zoom out so you can see it a bit better where you want the it's maybe you know what makes the lettering stand out probably that does okay so there's a good example of putting a gradient on your background putting a gradient on your um, lettering or shapes which we'll look at next time how to get appropriate fonts how to split them so that you've got do two different layers or multiple layers so you can move one relative to the other i haven't applied the gradient to that but of course it's the same principle as doing it to that so you have a go and uh, and, and, and please comment and share and also subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful thanks for watching see you next time